third overall pick market, Ken, at BetMGM. Uh, Drake May, minus 150. J.J. McCarthy, plus 130. Yeah, I mean, this is... So, uh, one of the offshores that deals this closed third overall pick and stopped taking bets on it. Um, and I, I don't... I mean, I don't, like, know who's doing every single bet at every single sports book or anything like that. Um, my guess would just be this is almost like the the whiplash from what happened in the offshore markets, like hitting the domestic markets, which is at the offshore markets, two hours ago, McCarthy got jammed to go third, and his under got bet a lot, and it's still minus 200, minus 210, and that didn't hit the domestics right away. That's usually how the draft works with this stuff. Stuff will get bet one place, and it'll take at least a little bit of time to move to the other places, whatever the, the action is, and there are people that'll see it at one and go bet it at the other, that's why. And, uh, and my guess is part of this is just that, I called it whiplash, but just like people like seeing it in one place and being like, well, wait, my book has this and, and finally betting it. And so you end up with this kind of like two hour later, it's almost like an aftershock, right? The initial earthquake was the offshore moving and now the aftershock is the, the domestic moving right after it. I, there's no, there's no new info. It's the same stuff. Um, I think there was like a, a Patriots beat reporter even that was like, maybe McCarthy like kind of floated <laughs> that a little bit. This is all God. like, it's. It's just it's it's all still under the category of nobody knows though. Like let's be really honest. No matter how confident you are that Jaden Daniels will be the second overall pick, and maybe we're more confident in that than the other stuff, it's not known by basically anybody, at least outside of like the inner circle of the Washington Commanders yet. Um, and if it was, it would be a way bigger price. He reopened minus seven fifty at this offshore. So like I think it's what everyone expects, but we're not in like Caleb Williams territory yet, which means that we're 26 hours away from the draft, 25 hours away from the draft, really, or the market's closing. It usually closes at 7 o'clock tomorrow, uh, Eastern time, that we just only know who the first pick is. And we still don't know anything else. And everybody's just guessing still. Everybody's just guessing still. And, uh, and that's really fun. And it's fun to do a show while that's happening. It's also like, so what the hell do I... Like, you're listening. Like, so what do I bet on? Like, what are the bets... And look, this this event's only going to get tougher as the years go on to answer that question. Sadly, I'll, I'll tell you, I bet McCarthy's under as part of the wave of everybody betting it. Me with too. The idea being, with the idea being, and look, like there are still some places I think where it's minus one something, but this is like starting to really, really go. But we did this earlier in the show. Uh, the idea being like, if two is remotely in play still, and three is remotely in play still, now two, three, and four, five, two, three, four, and five all have probabilities attached to them with him going. And okay, like add all of that up and do some like back of the notebook math and the under should probably be like a pretty big price now. If three is going to be even like a possibility for him, if two is still going to be even like a five, 10% possibility for him, you just add all that stuff up, four and five with trades, you end up at a pretty big price on under five and a half. Doesn't mean he'll go five, four, three, two. Doesn't mean he'll go any of those spots, just... Like you try to do some back of the notebook stuff, and I think a lot of people came up with the same the same math. And I'm I'm not trying to paint myself as like a big time insider who like knows all these things that people don't know, but we know like a little bit as to like how this stuff at least a little bit as yeah. to how this stuff happens. I just and I said this to Ken before the show started. Like if people knew how dumb a lot of this was, I think they would be like really shocked. Like some, some right. of like the where the move, steam the comes like, from, correct. where line like, how, movement comes from, how Absolutely. stupid some of this stuff. Yeah. I mean, this isn't like betting games. Like this is you have the answer to the test or you don't, or you think you have the answer to the test. And like that's what it is. It is just pe- really it's people think that the person who says it has the answer to the test. And how much do they think that person has the answer? And it's like when we're saying it's stupid, we're not saying the person is stupid or the per- Correct. in any situation. The person is not stupid. Or at least like we don't think they're stupid. Uh, it's more just like, okay, are are they respected like enough Andy. that they're gonna that they're gonna put it out there and other people are gonna really jam it? Or are they gonna put it out there and everyone's like yeah, yeah, great. What? But like, it's in this case, people were willing to run with that info, and hope honestly, hopefully they're right. Because like, I you know, I just uh, I'm sure a lot of people are betting probably too much money on stuff that they think is a sure thing or very likely to happen. And look, we've been through this enough. We've been through it where we had the goods. We've been through it last year where we didn't. And I feel like last year we did a good job of being like, look, like this is all really like you, we don't, we don't know. And I don't think a lot of people know, even people that like kind of think they know. And look what ended up happening. Like Stroud two, trade for three for Anderson, Levis out of the first round, Carter doesn't go five. I mean, that everything gets nuked right off the bat. Everything everybody thought got like completely crushed and a couple people had it, but most people didn't. Yeah. And uh, so again, just to reiterate this, we're... 
25 hours away from markets being closed for the NFL draft. We only know one thing right now, <laughs> which reminds me of like the one thing commercials that we used to run during sure. the breaks back in like another lifetime. One thing, well, Jewel used to shoplift. Here's or, Jewel like, shoplifting <laughs> bags. Right. That's it. Or, or like, here's, uh, was it Machine Gun Kelly or like some, I don't know, yeah. I don't know who it was. Uh, some, it was, right? Easy. It was G-Eazy, right? <laughs> yes, yes, excuse me. The other white rapper. My yeah, bad. Yeah, G-Eazy. Yeah. Like, here's G-Eazy, G-Eazy, G-Eazy on Machine mental health. Yes. Yeah, I'm surprised the clip didn't start with like, <sighs> well, guys, yes. let me tell you about uh, what's going on. Oh, man. So, listen, we, we only know one thing. Just one. Caleb Williams is going first. We it's that one thing that's got us Caleb tripping. Caleb going one. We're on for four hours starting at 3 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. <laughs> we, don't, we don't do Can't wait. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's clear the dope ass beat and start out talking about some bets for tonight. Right now, I got a note from someone being like, "How come you're not doing the elongated now anymore?" So I figured I'd throw it in a couple more times today. Oh, nice. uh, once a day, once a day, you are listeners and viewers. You can play the free BetMGM Fast Break for a chance to win daily prizes. You play as the point guard, pass the ball to Kevin Garnett, Jalen Rose, or. Take it to the hoop yourself. If you score the basket, you win a prize. Details can be found on BetMGM.com. Download the BetMGM app and start winning with the King of Sportsbooks and BetMGM offering an extensive menu for you to bet the National Football League draft. Uh, let's start in the NBA here, Ken. Oh, and maybe we'll probably only have time. Am I oh, what do you got? Again? Yeah. Offshore. We'd like the draft of music. We need the music here for this kind of stuff for tomorrow. Uh, offshore that takes rebets reopen two and three now, finally. Uh, two Daniels minus 750, May five to one, three May. This is really interesting. So there was, uh, there's actually an ARB in this market literally right now. If someone wants nine cents, anyway, um, May minus 185, three. So there was a lot of buyback on him. And if you want McCarthy to go three, you can, and that again, so, so think about the rebound effect and think about like the aftershock. So now that hit the domestics. Now the now the offshore is going back to heavy Daniels again or heavy May again, excuse me. And now you can just again you could just play these two against each other again the other way. You could just do that. Then you don't even need to have the goods. You know what the goods are? You winning, which you guarantee by clicking two buttons. Uh, McCarthy yes three plus one ninety four to uh, to juxtapose that to like what happened to some of the domestics about I don't know. 20 minutes ago. So we got reopen on three. Uh, the updated draft position at this particular sports book for JJ McCarthy, five and a half, still juiced a lot. Because I think this is like, this is why you and I bet this, I think, too, where it's like, well, if it's still possible it's three and it's four and five in a trade, then I still like under five and a half, whether he goes third or not. Under five and a half minus 216 uh, at this particular wow. one. What would the, uh, the rock band Queens of the Stone Age say about the number three, th- th- the third overall pick in the draft? Uh oh, no one knows it. <laughs> we get these bets to place now. <laughs> JJ third neighbors fourth. It's a great song. It's like they didn't really even have like another good one after that. Hey, I'm shocked that like that 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 baseline hasn't like lived the way that the Seven Nation Army baseline has. Trey Hendrickson, Cincinnati Bengals star pass rusher, has requested a trade away from the Bengals. Base, the long and short of it, wants more financial security. The Bengals are about to pay Jamar Chase an absolute boatload of money. They're paying Burrow a boatload of money. They're not going to have the money to pay all these guys, which is something that we've known for like a long time, that they're going to have to make some really tough decisions. So Hendrickson now joins T. Higgins as players who have demanded trades. My guess is, and it's an informed guess, I think I'm going to be right, is that the Bengals are not going to trade either player and will try and win the Super Bowl this year with both of them, with an unhappy group of players who want to make more money. And Ken, like, maybe it works. You do have Joe Burrow. Or, like, maybe maybe this could be, like, a bad brew, a combustible brew this year for the Cincinnati Bengals in a really, really, really tough division. Oh, a bad, a bad Bengal brew? Oh, man, that sounds great. Uh, Triple B. Yeah, I just... Uh... The Bengals are going to be really tough this year because just a handicap to figure out. They're going to be rated really highly. Going to be one of the favorites to win their division. They're going to have a really high win total. Uh, their schedule breaks very easy versus the other teams in their division. Their schedule overall is very difficult. 
because they play in the AFC North, but versus the other teams in their division, they actually drew easier than you would expect for a team like with this expectation um, because of how they played last year and how the division broke and how the other teams, all this stuff. So they, they drew pretty easy where they could win a lot of games and Burrow could win MVP and play really well. The thing that kind of hangs me up on them as like what you're talking about, this like let's go all in and let's win the Super Bowl is the defense was an absolute disaster last year. And I don't think that's just because, like, Burrow got hurt and the team fell off a little bit, whatever. Like, they were in the hunt for the playoffs going into the second last week of the season. And, like, I just the defensive numbers are way... Where, like, Lou Anarumo got, you know, heavily praised for those those playoff appearances multiple years. Just, like, the numbers are not very good. And whether Hendricks is there or not, like, a, a team that's, I mean, realistic offensive projection, you know, like, definitely, like, top eight and could be better realistic defensive projection 20th at best okay what is that team that's a 10 and 7 11 and 6 team that doesn't win the super bowl that's what that is and uh you know it can be different than that but like i i would not go into this being like wow like burrow's back want to bet him to win the super bowl they can win a lot of games he can win mvp because they win a lot of games i've always kind of viewed them as like they're gonna win a good amount a lot of the time there's no way to make any money on that and i don't want to bet them to win even more than the market expects i'd rather bet them to either win less or definitely bet other teams to win the super bowl i want to break in here before we do the uh before we get to our bets for tonight third overall pick market ken at bet mgm uh drake may minus 150 jj mccarthy Knicks up 2-0 on the Sixers. Series shifts back to Philly. Uh, Nuggets up 2-0 on the Lakers. Series goes to Los Angeles. Like, any reason to believe the Lakers or the Sixers can come back? Any bets for those two Game 3s moving on in the series here in about a minute so we save time for everything else, please? Yeah, I'm on both the series dogs in, the, in these games. I'm on Sixers minus 4.5 and, and Lakers on the money line. A, a slight minus number. Um, one, the Lakers are going to get an, an obscene whistle in this game. They're just going to get an obscene whistle. And eventually, like, I have no choice here. They keep going up by double digits. I can't stop betting a team that keeps going up by double digits versus the other team, even if they keep losing. I guess I could stop, but I won't stop. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go in ahead and embrace the pain and bet the Lakers again. Um, the Sixers outplayed the Knicks in the first two games. Sorry, Nick, but they did. Like they, they outplayed the six, the, the Knicks in the I'm first two games. I'm up to nothing. Game. I don't care. They got right. Miles. Yeah. They got they got Miles McBride in Game One, and whatever Oof. happened at the end of that game in Game Two, and I just keep thinking if this was a two three matchup in the second round, and this was Games Three and Four in New York, would you expect them to win both of those? Yes. How would you feel if they won both of those in the way that they did them? Bad for the Knicks. So I still like Sixers in the series, but I'm terrified because I do think they won two coin flip games. I'm gonna be on. I'm gonna take this game by game. Sixers minus four and a half in Game Three. And I'm on the Lakers for some reason in game three as well. 